Hello there, this is Tan Lee, founder of 3D Cat Masters. I want to show you how to make a circular disc Lego plate. Let's start with a part creation. You can do that. This is simply done by create part, give it a name, just like that, and with your initials. And you may have this in your workspace. Okay. You click on a model tree on the datum planes and it highlights or illuminates in your workspace. I'm going to select extrude, select top plane here and click sketch view. Okay. Then you're going to go grab a circle, bring your mouse to the center, left click, drag the mouse, left click again middle click or click the one by one or select here i usually middle click on my mouse and middle click until this is released and this is pressed okay all right i'm going to change that to 1.25 inches and it's going to shrink that's all right click refit zoom in with your mouse Okay, use a scroll wheel to zoom in. That's a small circle there. You can drag this one closer to the geometry and refit it. Okay, simple, right? Okay, go ahead and start and we wait for you. Okay, then I click the check mark and it turns the circle into a pin. That is a third dimension. Let's change that to 0 0.125 on an inch. Okay, now it looks like a coin. Okay. Now you might see jagged line around the edge there. Go ahead and turn this on, shading with edges, or press control number two. If you see jagged circular edge, that's normal. We go to prepare under file under model properties change this accuracy to this number replace number 39 with one number one regenerate close it out there you go much better okay go and do that and i'll wait for you so far so good all right, so just to introduce you, this is the back side, bottom, front, left, right, and top. Okay, we're going to do that again when we finish the whole design. All right, now I usually press Control D to show the 3D view okay next is what what do you guys think it has a bunch of studs okay now you put a two by four brick on top of this but you need the studs to keep it still click extrude select the top face click on sketch view all right and we're going to go from left to right. Draw a simple circle. Middle click. Now it shows three numbers. This is the location. Okay. I'm going to try to keep it close to the that center line there. I'm going to use 5 over 32. 5 over 32 again. That is the diameter of the stud. 0 0.19 of an inch. Okay. Press Control D. Okay, that's the first stud. 
click OK to see what it looks like. That is zero point zero seventy eight. Okay. All right. There's the first step. Now I want four of them here and then eight of them outside. Okay. Let's keep it simple. Let's go back to the first circle. And um, you can add more over here or you can mirror it. Select this one. You can mirror about here. There are a couple of ways of doing this. Okay, you can select both of these. Mirror like this. And you click OK. Okay. Or let me control Z to undo that. Or you can do pattern. Select this one. Let me rename this one to stud. Okay, and this is going to be the disk. Okay. So that you can recognize the feature names quickly. Uh, this one I can pattern. You can click here or here. Okay. I like to pattern this singular stud around the axis, but I need to turn on the axis. Select this button. Select axis. And there's the axis that we need to um, use a type axis under type there. Default is dimension. We skip that and that we choose axis. And we're going to select the axis there, rotate around the axis. Okay. But you need to move over it. It will highlight with orange color. You left click it to select it. It turns into green it's hard to see over the gray background but it's okay it is selected how do I know is in there okay and I want four of them well by default it has four members around the axis and the angular spacing between the two adjacent studs is 90 degrees I click OK and I get the same result as I did before. So either way, you can do the pattern or you can mirror on the sketch. Okay, either way. Whatever you feel like doing, go for it and you will see um, the other technique will be applicable to a different case. All right, so far so good. Any question, guys? We'll stop and wait for you to complete. Or you can click pause in this video and finish what you need to do and resume when you're ready. Thank you. All right, so we got two this way and two that way. We need two, four, six, and eight out here. Now we can do two on the uh, outer edge and then pattern that. Would that work? I think most students like to do pattern okay pattern you can do a lot of members where mirror you want to do you know a pair at a time so I'm gonna go with pattern what should I do here I'm just gonna press control D and think right control D is the same as clicking that option there or the second option um, your left hand should be hovering over your keyboard to save all right when you save and you're gonna know where you put your file under be aware of that when you save you want to keep your files together all right well, let's see here i guess we can do this use control d let's consider us a left side right side top and bottom that way we get the same orientation every time all right, let's do that. Let's go extrude, select this one, and click what? Sketch view, you got it. All right, refit if necessary. 
So that was the first one I started here, right? And I reread from left to right, top to bottom. So generally, I just start from the top, upper left corner for my first sketch. And then I, you can populate it to the right or below. That way you know the first one is always on the left hand upper corner. So we need two over here and two over here. So the plan is to make two on the far left. This is my plan. If you want to start at the top, go for it. Okay. Um, same thing. Click on circle. And let's see how we do this here. I want to put one here. And it's giving me the same diameter. 0 0.19 of an inch. And the location can be slightly different. So here's a rule. If from here to here is 5 over 32, from here to here is not a 5 or 32, from here to here is not a 532, so the total distance is going to be 3 times 5 over 32. That makes sense? Again, this is 5 over 32, another 5 over 32, another one. So that's 3 times 5 over 32. Makes sense? I press enter, and there you go. And this one is the same as the first location, which is 1 times 5 over 32. Okay, I mean, I can put 1 times in front of it. Does not make a difference, but it helps you see the pattern. There we go. Now, so the plan is to make another one here. So I'm just going to do mirror in this case. Easy, right? Well, you do mirror, you don't have to enter any numbers. Okay. What that also means that this will control this guy. If this changes, this will also change because it's a mirror member. All right, now that is located correctly. Okay, we're gonna press Control D, click OK. What's the same height, which is that number? Yeah, drop it down. Remember this guy is every time you enter, Creo remembers or save somewhere in session. Uh, drop down menu is handy. When you see a drop down menu, take advantage of it. Okay. All right. I'll wait. If I'm too fast, let me know. Thanks, guys. All right. So I want to choose this one here. That is a depth of the first four. And take a look around it. I have a 3D mouse in my left hand. I want to rotate it as so you see the demonstration, how it works. Pretty smooth. You can get one on the Amazon. Okay. All right. We click OK and we got six studs. So the plan is to pattern those outer two studs around the same axis. Here we go. Let's give this name outer. Nope. Outer. Underscore. Try to use underscores if you can. Outer studs. Click that button to pattern. And what do I do here? Any guess? It's the same thing as we did before. Type what? Axis. You got it. And zoom in carefully to find the center axis. Now we have additional axes, but I want to keep the same one, which is A1. And by default, it gives you four members at 90 degrees apart. Click OK or middle click. There you go. Pretty, pretty cool, huh? All right, I'll wait. You finish it up. All right. Now, it's supposed to be hollow down here. So we're not going to use extrude to do it. We're going to use a an engineering tool called Shell. Select it. Click the bottom face. That will carve it out internally. Now, there are two locations where you enter the shell thickness, which is 0 0.058. Enter always, or you can do it here, okay? Either place, depending on where your mouse cursor is. If your mouse cursor is over here, do it over here. If your mouse cursor is over here, do it over here. All right, makes sense. All right, am I too fast? Looks pretty cool. When things work in Creo, it turns into this bright yellow, orange, however you see it, is a 
color of success, okay? If you don't see that color, that means something is wrong. All right, we're not gonna mess around with these options here. We're gonna keep all the defaults as is. Click OK. All right, Control D again. You don't see the shell. Click on bottom. Now you see it. All right, let's plan to put the, the tubes out here to connect the studs of the uh, of the adjacent Lego brick or plate below it. Okay, extrude, select this bottom face, circle again. Let um, me think here. I think we're gonna put one, two, four. All right, we're gonna put one here for now. We know it's gonna be one in every four stud. Okay, now we, there's a tube which has two circles. Be careful, don't let things snap, see that? That's not good, so back away from it. And then you use the, the numbers to control it. The outer one should be a quarter of an inch. The inner one should be about the size of the stud's diameter. And the location is gonna be five over what? Not 32, 16, which is twice as long. Okay, now this is on that center line, so we know it's zero. We, know, we don't need a dimension to locate it. Okay, now we're gonna use pattern this time. Oh, again. Okay, and then we're gonna choose this option here. On depth, we're gonna select the bottom one with the red line there to reference. And we'll select that rim surface as a reference. Click OK. Tube pattern. What, what, what do we do here? Axis, right, you got it. Click on the main one and it say A1, use that. A1 is the first axis. A2 is the second one, so forth. All right, we're gonna have four. Let's see what it looks like. Let's think here. That's fine, that's fine. And I believe there should be a half tube at this zone and three more on the other zone. So let's just do one first. Extrude again, select that face, sketch view. Now it's gonna sit right here. Okay, and later on we're gonna make a slot cut. All right, circle. It's gonna be right here in line with that center, in line with that center. So I wanna click here, same center. Don't worry about the location or the size yet. Just sketch them and then define them, okay? So the outer one is gonna be, or the inner, outer is gonna be, 25, okay, location is, what was it? Five over 16, okay, five over 16 vertically. There we go, take a look at it. All right, sketch view again. Be sure that you sketch view when you are sketching, please. All right, um, the plan is to cut it in half. So we're gonna click line here. And be careful, you can start from here to there. Well, I don't need to snap. Or, let's not do that. Control Z, it's okay to do that. Now when you have a good sketch, it's gonna fill in with this color. I'm gonna restart it again, I'm gonna use line. I'm gonna start from here, you don't have to be precise, just pass through the center, go across the other side, make sure it still passes through the center, and middle click to leave that line tool, middle click again, now it's gonna pop in the dimension. All right, so this one is perpendicular to what? We don't want that, I'm gonna select these. So you may not see this constraint, but you do see it, just delete them. 
And that should leave something that I can define. Now I don't have an angle. I'm looking for an angle. So I want to go make a new dimension. Click on dimension. Select this one. And measure against this one or this one. So that is select. Select that one and middle click between them to give an angle between these two lines. I know it's kind of tricky. Middle click it and then type 45 degrees, press enter. Ooh, we got a mess here. So it didn't cross through that center. Let me undo that. Let's try again. Just hold steady on your mouse. Make sure that center uh, constraint is shown there at the center. You see that next to the yellow square. Okay, middle click. Do I have, oh, that's perpendicular. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, so it, it needs to be in there. Uh, that's okay, let's dimension. Select this one like we did before, zoom out and select this horizontal reference, middle click. All right, I think this is gonna work. 45, there we go. So I needed that perpendicularity constraint in there, okay. So as long as you have the center line going through the center, okay. All right, now I'm gonna click on the least segment as an eraser, erase the outer circle or the outer semi-circle rather and Guess what? I don't need that part anymore. Okay, because I just need that edge to cover it at like a half tube or a letter C rather, if you can see that. Okay, I see angle controlling that uh, line or lines. You still have the same diameter inner and outer. Okay, and location is still in good shape. So make sure those numbers are still valid. And then you click OK. I'll just give you a little rotation here. OK. Click OK. Am I too fast? So I am. Pause. Watch it again. Well, I can wait for you. All right. Now we're going to define the depth. Like before, we're going to use this one with two reference. Select it. Select this one. And you have that in 3D. Okay, let's give this a name here, half tube. All right, and then pattern it. Axis again, choose A1. Hover your mouse and it will show the name. Just be patient, guys. Be patient with Creo. It is a very powerful software. All right, four of them, 90 degrees apart. Click OK. There we go. OK, now uh, we need to make a slot out here. OK, so same thing again. Extrude, select that rim surface, reorient or click on sketch view. I'm going to make a uh, center line from the center origin going through that guy there. All right, now it is assuming it's 45 degrees from here to here. Okay, I can double check it. Click on dimension, select that, that, middle click. It is 45, I can add it as a reference so we know that it's always 45. In case something changes, you see the number, okay, and you see if it changes or not. Be aware of every dimension. All right. Um, so I want to use this slanted rectangle. I want to go from here. And I know I'm, it's going to cut here and here on the rim. So when we cut something, we don't really care about exact geometry. OK, so the slanted rectangle lets you start from either side of the center line. And when you push the other side, it's going to go perpendicular. Yes, yes, yes. And then wait. And this shows you that little. Uh, symbol there it means that it is 
uh, symmetrical. Uh, that line is symmetrical about that center line, if that makes sense. And you drag the other side of the slant rectangle passing through uh, the rim. Again, we're going to cut everything inside this zone. All right, so we need to define this. Um, click on dimension, select this one, middle click out here, and type in what number? Anyone? Give me a guess is 0 0.25, okay? It's the same size as the outer diameter of the tube. All right, so that's all we need. We're just gonna chop this off in here. Um, we cannot chop anything in there. There's nothing to cut in there. There's nothing to cut in here. Well, it depends on how far I extend it downward, right? So we're gonna keep there. We don't ignore that. We don't, we're gonna ignore that number there because again, we don't care about the uh, the actual length of the slanted rectangle. We notice overlaps this rim here, and you see what I mean in a second here. I'll click OK, and we're gonna remove material, then flip the direction. Remember, everything when you see the arrow pointing to uh, inward or pointing outward, that is the direction of the work, whether it's you remove or you add. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna remove inside this rectangle, but we're gonna remove it downward. So I'm gonna drag this guy down. Okay, and let's cut all the way to the bottom. Select reference, select this, this one here, and there you go, it cuts to it. You see what I mean? Let me go to the bottom view and see directly. Oops, wrong one. Bottom, bottom. There we go. So now you look straight at it. Okay, that's a slanted rectangle with 0.25 in length. We don't care about this length. Okay, as long as you don't cross over the existing geometry, okay, and you're okay. I mean, you can drag it back a little bit here too if you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, let me show you this. See that? It makes no difference. All right, we click OK, and guess what? Let's type it in the slot there, pattern it. You got it. We're gonna pattern using axis again, and we find A1, and we click OK. And voila, we have a nice circular disc. Guess what we're missing? We're missing the center hole. All right, we're gonna go to the top view, and you can go to the bottom, it doesn't matter. All right, I press Control D. Now remember, my habit is I save by pressing Control what? Control S. And Control D is to reorient it, okay? And another one is Control Z, and I use the one to, to when I make a mistake. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I Control Z, Control S, and Control Ds, and David, uh, my top three keyboard shortcuts. All right, let's make a hole at the center there. And move your mouse slowly, okay? Let it highlight an orange color and then you click on it and it turns to green and it is kind of eliminates quickly. So you have to be aware of that. Now, I click sketch view, right? When you sketch, you need to use that frequently and that too. Now, if you have a 3D mouse, have fun, but quickly put it back to sketch view. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to use circle again. We'll use a lot of circle to here and here. And left click, middle click to leave. That one is give it um, maybe 0.19 again. All right, and this is right in the origin. We don't need to locate it. All we need just is uh, the size definition. And by default, it's all we adds. It doesn't remove. Remove and then guess what? Anybody can tell me why I don't see the hole yet? You see, this yellow dot is in the wrong direction. All right, there you go. Click OK. All right, let's look on the bottom. Now the bottom will have um, four circular tabs. Okay, why four? Because when you connect it to a stud. Um, these slots will allow some flexibility. Okay, extrude. 
sketch view. And I think we're gonna use the same as this one. And then draw another one as same as, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be the same as the outer tube diameter. So why not? Okay. We want to recycle and repeat the numbers or dimensions, whether it's a size or location. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Um, I think we're going to use what? Reference, right? Okay. And select the rim there. Click OK. Now we need to create three slots here. So extrude again, select this face. Click sketch view, you got it. And uh, it's just a little gap for flexing uh, a quarter of it when you connect it over a stud, okay? Uh, let's go to this guy here, corner. No, let's use center rectangle. I'm just gonna start somewhere here. We're gonna, you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna pattern it, okay? Let's keep this one simple. I usually go either here or here, but in this case, we use 12 o'clock. All right, and we're gonna, remember, we're gonna remove this one. So this one's gonna be, uh, let me guess, what was the shell? The shell is 0 0.058 of an inch, right? I think so. And again, we don't care, how, you know, how uh, long this is, just like the other slot that we made earlier. Okay, uh, but we need, we care about this width here, and then we click OK and see what it looks like. Uh, let's remove, flip the arrow, chain this to reference, and select this face here. Okay, let the mini slot touch base here. Okay, all right, we got one there. Let's uh, name this one mini. Slot, okay. What's the name of this one? Let's call it tabs. What about this one? Uh, that's a center hole. Let's use underline. There we go. All right, am I too fast? I'll wait or pause the video and let me know, okay? All right, I'm gonna select this in your model tree and then guess what? We're gonna pattern. I think this is the last time we're gonna pattern in this exercise. Woohoo! All right, chain to axis and select A1. Hover and let it illuminate the name or the datum axis. Select it, gives you the default four members, default 90 degrees between two of them. Click OK. There we go. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? All right. That was a fun exercise. Um, just keep that in mind. It's a simple approach. Now, I like this technique. If you have a better way to do it, feel free to comment and drop me uh, an email. This is Tan Lee. This has been a wonderful experience with this exercise. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.